Hey guys, it's Mac again. Welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you joining me today. Today we've got another episode of On the Road Again. Just driving, thinking about three gun. And actually I was thinking about um, a post on the Brian Enos three gun forums um, about how you zero your rifle for three gun. And it sort of posed what I thought was a good topic for me. What ammo do I use in my rifle for three gun? And what zero do I use? And uh, first off, the ammo is the easy part. Um, I've always really liked and had uh, good success with Freedom Munitions. Freedom Munitions is a huge three-gun supporter. Um, these guys uh, really put out for three-gun matches, prize tables, and there for a while, when ammo was hard to find, Freedom Munitions would help you uh, help you shoot a three-gun match. You know, by providing match ammunition. So. Uh, that kind of support goes a long way and I really uh, enjoy getting my ammo from them because I know that they give back. And um, typically I like to shoot their 55 grain FMJ, which is, you know, range ammo or hoser ammo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's some of the most inexpensive and affordable 223 ammunition that you're going to be able to shoot in matches. So. Um, for my rifle, which has my stretch 16 barrel, um, I can shoot that ammunition sub MOA at 100 yards. And I actually don't mind shooting it further out than that. I mean, it's going to be dead nuts on when I've shot it at 200 yards. I get good hits at 300 yards. Um, just a good all around ammunition for me. And that's uh, Freedom Munitions 55 grain FMJ. Now, that being said, I do go to matches with two different loads because I do like to run a long range accuracy load. And uh, this is some of my hand loads, and it's a 69 grain Nosler open tip match uh, that I reload uh, using uh, Accurate 2230 powder. That's just what I've had recently. I worked up a load for it, and uh, it's really, really good ammo for me. Um, at 100 yards, I'm able to get 0.4 MOA groups in my stretch 16 barrel. And uh, when I shoot it at three or 400 yards, you know, I'm able to get 10 out of 10 hits. Um, it, it really, really shines at long range. Um, another sort of factory load that I've used before is Hornady Steel Match 75 grain. Uh, it's a boat tail hollow point. Really, really good and fairly affordable ammunition. The problem is it's hard to find right now. Um, I was thinking about picking up about four or five boxes for upcoming Fort Benning three gun match and um, it's just nowhere to be found right now so I'm gonna have to reload uh, some of my 69 grainers to take to that match and uh, that actually brings uh, the point that I sort of want to discuss here uh, the thread said or it was a poll actually that said how do you zero your rifle if you have two different loads do you zero it with your up close 55 grain hoser load and then do you account for your hold off with your long range ammunition or do you zero with your long range ammunition and know your hold off for your up close ammunition and guys for me anyway this is a really common sense answer to a common sense question where is accuracy or precision to be more exact where is it most critical where is it most important to know that you're hitting exactly where you're aiming? And that's those long range steel targets with a rifle in some weird funky position, um, you know, three, 400 yards. That's where precision is the most important. So that's how I'm zeroing my rifle. I zero it with the 69 grainers and I zero it at 200 yards. I know my 300 yard hold off or correction on my turrets. I know my 400 yard hold offs or corrections and I know that everything inside of 200 the really the maximum amount of deviation from center that you're going to have with a 200 yard zero is about 2 MOA or 2, or two inches either above or below uh, your reticle. So on any target under 200 yards it's almost admissible to have that amount of deviation because I mean, under 50 yards with the paper targets that are typically used, you're gonna have no problem getting even those two shots within the A zone uh, with two MOA of deviation. So, um, and additionally, you know, steel targets at 100 yards, 
they're still bigger than two MOA. Even if you didn't account for any hold off, you still should be totally fine hitting those targets. Now, the other thing that you probably do need to know in the back of your mind, though, is you know what is your other ammunition do uh, at that distance? So even if I zero with my 69 grain hand loads, you know I'll still shoot my 55 grain FMJ free ammunitions at each of those distances and see just how much of a difference there is in the point of impact. And typically with my barrel, uh, it shoots about an inch high and an inch to the left. So, I mean, I can easily hold that off. Like if, if I fire off a couple of misses, you know, I can hold down four o'clock or five o'clock uh, quickly. Or if I'm going up to a stage where there's no long range at all and I just wanna make sure that it's completely zeroed for the 55 grain ammo, I can just click it down on my turrets, uh, you know, one MOA down, one MOA to the right. Um, you know, obviously I verified that at the range before I go to the match to know that that's what's going to correct my point of impact. So that's my thought process going into it. You know, having information is always a good thing when you go to a match and having different options. So um, that's my rifle ammo, my rifle setup and uh, how I zero my rifle. I do believe that the 200 yard zero, and some people will equate that to a 50 yard zero, even though they're not exactly the same, is the most useful for the majority of three gun matches. Um, I zero mine right at 200 yards. Uh, that way the trajectory is fairly flat and everything up to uh, about 275 yards is within two inches or two MOA of where I'm aiming. Then at 300 yards, I've got approximately a three MOA drop, at 350, five MOA, and at 400, seven MOA. And I can very easily adjust that before a stage on my turrets if I need to, or if you have a ballistic uh, reticle, you can just use your hash marks. So um, that's the way I have it set up. Um, you know, obviously one answer is not the best answer for everybody, but uh, hopefully that's some useful information for you on my rifle setup. So once again, this is Mac. I really appreciate you joining me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking that little red subscribe button in the lower left. Once again, be safe, as always, on the range, and we'll see you next time. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by clicking on the video on the upper left. As a subscriber, you'll be immediately notified every time I upload a video on a weekly basis. And these videos include guns and gear reviews, as well as content that's always related to 3Gun. And also, to watch more of my most popular videos, click on the video on the lower left. Once again, this is Mac. As always, be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.